what's going on guys? Still back at you with another video. Week 15 picks. I want to welcome back a special guest. He is a member of the Steelers City Supples and just one of the coolest Steelers fans and most realistic Steelers fans and one of the more diehard Steelers fans that we know, man. Still made. welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us for the predictions. How are you, man? Thanks a lot, boys, for having me back. I'm doing great getting these finals out of the way and then got commencement on Sunday. How you boys doing? Not too bad, man. That's great to hear. Good luck to you, man. And uh, congrats to you uh, in advance and everything. But uh, glad to have you back on the channel, man, for the predictions. Uh, let's get into it. Thursday Night Football, we have the Jets at the Ravens. This is a no-brainer. Uh, I hate to ask you this question because, I, I mean, I already know your prediction. But what shall be your prediction? Oh, my God. You know, it's just so fitting that with a lot of these Thursday night games this year, they've been really terrible that we get, like, a complete mismatch to end the Thursday night games because this is the last one of the year. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really need to say anything else. I got the Ravens winning this one easily. I mean, the Jets are terrible, but I think one thing to kind of look out for this game is that Lamar Jackson has a minor quad injury that John Harbaugh said. He said it's nothing severe, but... Other than that, Lamar should be good to go in this game. And regardless of what it is, I got the Ravens just absolutely killing these guys. And here's how confident I am. I got the Ravens not only shutting out the Jets, but I got them putting 50 on them. 52 to nothing, Ravens. God damn. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <sighs> yeah, I mean. I mean, this is the Jets we're talking about. It can easily happen. Oh, of course. Uh, damn, a shutout. A 50 burger and a shutout at yep. that. God damn. Uh, yeah, plus the Ravens. Yeah, and plus the Ravens are gonna want that North title too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because I believe if they win this game, they clinch the division. So yeah, uh, can't pick an can't pick an easier fucking game to to clinch the division with the Jets. Uh yeah, forty eight to three. I got the Ravens forty five to ten. Ravens, yeah, yeah, Ravens. So. Yeah, no brainer. Uh, but Sunday games, man. Oh man, you know it's it's fucking funny. The Patriots. We have the Patriots and the Bengals. Apparently, last week the the fucking Patriots sent one of their scouts or whatever to apparently film the Bengals sideline. And apparently there was eight full minutes of Bengals uh, or uh, of videotaping the Bengals sideline of hand signals, play calling, communication, all that shit. The fucking Bengals videotaped the, 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 the uh, or the Patriots videotaped the Bengals from the, the Browns press box. First of all, it's the Bengals we're talking about here. Like, I can understand if it's maybe, I don't know, the Seahawks or the Niners or I'll even say the Vikings. First of all, you, but this, this is the 1 and 12 Bengals we are talking about. I understand the Patriots' offense is lacking, but they must be this desperate. Really. It's, it's that, but it's just the fact that they videotape again after, uh, of course, uh, a reputation of, of doing it for 20 years. What's your prediction, man? Well, you guys took the words right out of my mouth. You know, like, I understand the Patriots have had a really kind of Jekyll and Hyde offense this year. It's definitely had their good moments, and it's definitely had their really bad moments. But I got to tell you, now the Patriots have two advantages in this game because now they know, I mean, not that you, not that you need to cheat on the fucking Bengals anyway, because they're that bad. But <laughs> with their defense just being so abysmal, it's like, what more do you want? You pretty much got this game won. You're pretty much going to clinch yourself a playoff spot no matter what the case is. The only difference is the division title is just not going to be a cakewalk for you because the Buffalo Bills have been on their heels all season. So it's like, what more mm -hmm. do the Patriots want? They have to be, like, I, I don't even know what to say. They got to be fucking desperate to spy on the Bengals. I would even I would even understand if they spied on us, to be honest. Uh -huh. oh my God. But, yeah, 
this is a no-brainer here. I'm wasting too much time with this. You guys thought it was uh, you guys thought it was rough when I gave my Ravens Jets prediction. This game is saying hold my beer. Patriots, <laughs> pa- Patriots win this one 63 to nothing. God damn. Yeah. If there's any week the Patriots break out of their slump on offense, it's this one. Bottom line. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm. I, I, th- there's no way I'm going to top that. I mean, I could easily say that, but I'm talking out of my ass. Um, 52, you know, 50 to nothing. This is a shutout. Uh, I'm going to say. Right, oh, Patriots. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say f- uh, 48 to nothing. I say the Bengals get wow. nothing. We all get shutouts. Yeah, man. I mean, it's the fucking Bengals. They're they're on their way to the number one overall pick. They're on their way to ruin another quarterback's life and shit. So, I mean, it's all right, Joe Burrow. Yeah. Uh, God, God damn. Buccaneers at the Lions. What's your prediction, man? Well, this is one of my closer games for the week, actually. Just so you know, I'm a little point hungry this week because, like, I can see a lot. You know. For you guys that are in my tournament, I'm a little point hungry this week. Let me put it to you like that. So I'm going to be predicting quite a bit of blowouts this week or some solid wins, just so you know. But this will be one of my mm-hmm. closer games of the week. Um, the Buccaneers all of a sudden have won three in a row. And I'm not exactly sure if they're still mathematically alive in the NFC, but common sense would suggest that they have a slight chance. But let's be real, the Bucks ain't making it. They got into too much of a hole, and, you know, they play – the NFC is stacked this year. But I got to tell you, Jameis Winston has to be the most odyssey quarterback in the league. He turned the ball over three times last week, and he threw four touchdown passes. That, that's just what Jameis mm-hmm. Winston does. You know, the Buccaneers, I say this all the time with them. Their defense is horrible, but they got some really good playmakers at receiver. And I got to tell you, if the Buccaneers fix up that defense, they could potentially be almost like a dark horse in the NFC because I like Bruce Arians. I think he's a really good head coach, and I still think that he should have been our offensive coordinator. That's all there is to it. Huh. But, um, yeah, you know, the Lions with David Blau, if he's starting in this game, I don't know if he is, but – He's putting up some respectable numbers for what he is, but the Lions, they, they're just killing themselves with the defense they got right now. So I got this being a shootout, actually, and I got this being a really tight game. I got it being a shootout because both defenses are re- are really bad. So give me Tampa to win this one, 36-33. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Tampa as well. I, I just don't know what to think of Jameis Winston. Like, he's good, but then he's bad, then he's good, then he's bad at the same time. It's fucking weird. Um, I just don't understand it. I don't know how this man can be so, like you said, out of sync or inconsistent or, or just whatever fucking word fits. I don't know what word fits Jameis Winston at this point. Um, but I got the Buccaneers winning. Uh, I agree. I think this is kind of a shootout. So, uh, let's go 33 to 28 bucks. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with the Buccaneers here. Um, let's say 28 to 24. Okay. Next game, we have the Texans, who just got blown out by the Broncos after beating the Patriots. At the Titans, who are looking real good right now. So, what's your prediction, man? Um, this is a really important game for – Obviously, the Texans and Titans, but it's a really important game for us, too, because mm-hmm. we need we need Tennessee to lose this game. I mean, the thing is, you know, I'm going to say this in the Bill Stowers prediction. Even if we lose to Buffalo on Sunday night, as long as Tennessee loses, we're still the second wild card because we have a better conference record than Tennessee. We have the tiebreaker over them. But still, we need Tennessee to lose this game really badly because they are start. They have been playing really good football since Tannehill became their starter. Their defense still is a little shaky, but the Titan, you know, Derrick Henry's a, a stud too, as he always is. But the point is, the Titans have been playing really good football for the past couple of weeks, 
And then the Houston Texans, I don't know what the hell happened to them against Denver, but they got blown the hell out by them. I think it was 38 to 24. It really should have been 38 to 10 because Houston basically got two garbage time touchdowns. But, you know, I, I don't know. It seems like Houston's defense has kind of taken a step back if they got shredded by Drew Locke. And I think that trend can kind of continue against Ryan Tannehill. So, yeah, believe me, boys, I am definitely going to be hoping Houston wins this game, even though I'll miss it because my commencement is from one to four. I'm going to be pulling for Houston, but I'm going to actually go ahead and take the Titans to win this game simply because the Texans, I don't like the kind, I don't like how they're playing football right now. And it always seems like the Texans never show up in important games. And this is definitely one of them. I think they'll keep it close, but hate to say it, I got the Titans winning this one in a very hard fought game, thirty to twenty four. Okay. Uh yeah, uh well said, man. Um I just I can't trust the Texans. I, I just can't. They get blown out by the Ravens one week, they come back and beat the Patriots Sunday night, and then they come back and get blown out by the fucking Broncos with a rookie quarterback who just came off of IR. I mean, I, I just can't trust them. So, I'm going to go Titans here. They're looking high right now uh, with Tannehill as the starter. Uh, like you said, Derrick Henry's just going off. He's had a tremendous series of games recently. Um, guys keep stepping up. So, unfortunately, I got the Titans. Um, so, let's say 27-20, uh, Titans. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. You know, Titans need to lose, but I just can't trust the Texans. Uh, I'm going to say Titans. I'm going to say 26-20. to Okay. Next game, we have a terrible one. It was just, it's just, just so terrible. It's, it's the Dolphins at the Giants. Um, what's your prediction, man? Well, I'll call this one the Chase Young Bowl because that, that's all there is to it. The Chase Young Bowl. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, this is definitely a game that both teams can win, and it's for the wrong reasons. It's because the Dolphins, they lost in the final seconds to the Jets. But I think the Dolphins have an advantage in this game because they're staying in MetLife. Meanwhile, the Giants, they never know how to close out games. Eli Manning looked really solid last night. But the I'm telling you, that loss last night is squarely on Pat Shermer. Pat Shermer has to be the worst head coach in the league. And if I was a Giants wow. fan, I I would be infuriated by this team right now. I mean, just go just go look at Bad Dog's videos. He has every right mm -hmm. to be. If, so, yeah, like if I was a Giants fan, I would be infuriated by this team right now, especially with Pat Shermer. And that's just why I think the Giants have a chance, though, is because Eli Manning is coming off a good game. Saquon Barkley is always a factor. It looks like that uh, Darius Slayton kid's getting some good chemistry on the team, and the Dolphins' defense is horrendous. This is definitely a, a coin toss game. But I'm being honest with you guys, for the first time and probably the only time this season, I'm actually going with Miami here. And it's because, you know, like I said, the Dolphins, they have an advantage in this game. They're staying at MetLife. Meanwhile, the Giants are heading from Philly to MetLife. And I just don't trust Pat Shermer's coaching scheme, and I don't trust the Giants holding on to a lead in this game. Plus, um, Ryan Fitzpatrick's played okay since becoming the Dolphins starter. He's put, he's had a he's had some pretty decent games, but you know this guy's a journey and backup. That's all there is to it. But I'm actually going ahead and taking Miami to win the Chase Young Bowl, twenty-eight to twenty-seven. Wow, man. Um... I'd kind of say that's bold because, I mean, I don't think anyone would ever pick the Dolphins this year. But uh, this is uh, tough for me. I just don't know who to pick. Um, fuck it. I'm going to go Giants. I'm just going to – Giants. 30 to 21, Giants. I'm actually going to go with the Dolphins here. You know, I feel like the Giants could win considering it's at home. But – the Dolphins have played a lot better. You know, I mean, they're still losing, but they're playing a lot better. I feel like they can definitely get this win here. I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to say 
Dolphins. Okay. Next game, Broncos at the Chiefs. What's your prediction, man? I actually think this will be a lot better than what people say it than what people say it's going to be. Sure, the Chiefs have owned the Broncos over the past few years. I think Kansas City's won like seven or eight in a row against them, so they've owned them. But I actually think Denver can keep it close with them. You know, you know, like I was telling you boys before the stream started, um, Drew Locke looks like he's found his place as the starter with the team, and he's putting up some really good numbers for the Broncos. I think Denver just needs a couple of really good wide receivers and they need to fix up the run game a bit. And if that happens, Denver can Denver can actually be a solid team because I like their defense still. So, yeah, and plus, you know, John Elway is just a horrible GM on top of that. But, yeah, you know, Denver can actually be a solid team if they work on those issues. They've blown a lot of, they've blown a lot of leads this year, and really they should be over 500 if I'm being honest with you. But, you know, Bill Parcells always says, you are what your record says you are. That's a famous saying by him. But, yeah, you know, I stand by my statement. I think Denver can actually make this one really interesting because the Chiefs' defense is still really bad. I mean, I know they've played really well on defense over the past few weeks, but still Kansas City's defense is really is just really suspect. And I think Drew Locke can have a good game against the Chiefs. But in the end, they, the Chiefs got Pat Mahomes. They got a solid offense. They always will under Pat Mahomes. And Kansas City, I think they're going to be striving to get that uh, top two seed in the AFC now, now that they beat New England. And I got Kansas City winning this one in a pretty high-scoring game. I'm, get, I'm giving this one to the Chiefs 42-32. to 32. Okay. I agree. I think this will be better than what people expect. I think the Broncos are going to be a little competitive like they have been the last two weeks with Drew Locke at quarterback. I agree. I think the Broncos can be a stellar team uh, if they just fix up some holes, but um, I can't trust John Elway. So, uh, But with that being said, Chiefs are hot right now. Uh, I think they're going to try to clinch a – no, they already clinched a playoff spot. Um, did they, they clinch the bye yet? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um but still, I'm going to go with Chiefs anyway. So, uh, Chiefs win. Let's go 37 to 37 to 33, Chiefs. Yeah, I'm going to go with Kansas City here. Um, I'm going to say 38 to 27. Okay. Next game, we have the Eagles at the Redskins. What's your prediction, man? Eagles and the Redskins. So... I'm just going to be blunt with you, boys. Philly's, de- Philly's pass defense is atrocious. Last night's game showed it. They allowed two 50-yard-plus passes by Eli Manning last night, and they needed overtime to beat the Giants, who had lost eight straight games coming into that game. The Eagles mm-hmm. are not a good team. And Doug Peterson, I mean, sure, he has a winning resume with the Eagles, but I think Doug Peterson is one of the most overrated coaches in the league. This guy does not mm-hmm. know how to play call correctly. He doesn't know how to use timeouts properly, and he wastes challenges. So, yeah, I'm not sold on Doug Peterson, even even if he won a Super Bowl with the team. So, yeah, the Eagles, they're not playing well. Their wide receivers are terrible. They still can't catch. And their, defense, their pass defense is just really bad. And then the Washington Redskins, they're not a good – the Redskins have been horrible all season as well. But guess what? I'm actually going upset here. I'm going with the Redskins in this game. And here's why. It's it's mainly because of the Eagles' own weaknesses. It's because their pass defense is abysmal. The Redskins, they managed to keep it close with Green Bay, even though they lost. And I think Washington is due for an upset win here. I think that they will be able to contain Carson Wentz, and they're going to be able to pass all over that defense and have a pretty good day. And the Eagles, with how poorly they played this year, I think, you know, they lost to the Dolphins as well. They can definitely <laughs> lose to another trash team. So I'm going upset here, and I'm taking the Redskins 24-18. to 18. Wow. Big upset. But one I would not be shocked whatsoever because of what you just said. The Eagles are trash. And I think this team won the Super Bowl a few years back. And I think they still have a chance at winning their division. Yeah. Um, wow. I just don't think the Eagles won it. 
I just don't think the Eagles want the division. I just, I don't know. I mean, neither do the Cowboys. They've lost what? Cowboys have lost three straight or some shit. They were sitting at six and four, kind of comfortable in the East, and then they lost three straight. Now they're six and seven, as well as the Eagles. So, of course, this has massive NFC East and playoff, uh, you know, implications. But you know what? I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with you, man. I'm gonna go with the Redskins as well, because I just don't trust Eagles. I don't. I just don't. Redskins win. I can see Terry McLaurin having a, a another or a similar game to what Darius Slayton had to the point I'm actually starting him in fantasy. I said I was going to start Darius Slayton. I didn't. It turns out I didn't even have him in fantasy, which pissed me off. Um, I do have Terry McLaurin, though, I believe. I, I hope I because I'm starting him. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Redskins here. Uh, let's say 23 to 16. Okay. I'm actually going to agree with both of you, Redskins. I mean, the Eagles, they lost to the Dolphins, who have been trash. Yeah. They literally, they almost lost to the Cowboys. Or that Cowboys, I'm sorry, Giants, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Cowboys in their division. They almost lost to the Giants last night. It's like, yeah, Redskins. I, Redskins have a shot here. E- Eagles don't want it. Redskins are getting a little bit better as the weeks go on. And I'm going to say Redskins win. Let's say 24 to 18. Okay. Damn, man. It was got to be some trash if we all think that the Redskins stand a chance against them. Wow. What the fuck went wrong? I don't know. Seahawks at the Panthers. What's your prediction, man? This is a no-brainer right here. I got Seattle in a blowout. You know, the Seahawks, they're coming off a really bad loss to the Rams, but... The Rams are still a decent team, all things considered. I just don't think they'll be in the playoffs this year. But still, the Seahawks are looking sharp. And, you know, the Seahawks, they're another one of those teams to where they usually rebound and play well after a bad loss. And I think that's their motivation. Plus, they can clinch a playoff berth with this win. So you got to be thinking that they're going to be playing to get the playoff berth. They're still going to want to be catching up to the 49ers because they took first place away from them again so yeah seattle has all the has all the motivation and all the momentum possible to rebound and get a solid win panthers are just completely helpless right now kyle allen's turning into a turnover machine and their defense sucks so i'm taking seattle in a blowout here 33 to 13 yeah no brainer um Christian McCaffrey is the only thing that I can think of from the Panthers at this point. Um, yeah, uh, Seahawks. And the thing about the Panthers, that apparently they have confirmed that they will be uh, listening to trade offers to Cam Newton this offseason and seeing what Kyle Allen is. I mean, who the fuck's going to be their quarterback? Uh, are they going to draft one? Or are they going to depend on uh, – what's that dude they drafted from uh, – I think it was a oh, Will, Will, Will Greer or some shit. I don't fucking. I mean, yeah, goddamn. Yeah, Panthers are gonna be in some shit. Um, so in I mean, the next coming years, right? Uh, so Seahawks are gonna win this. This, uh, this is a no brainer. I agree. This is a blowout. This is a uh, forty two ten blowout. Seahawks. Yeah, I got Seattle. I'm gonna say thirty four to thirteen. Okay. Now we got a real good one, man. We have the NFC North matchup, man. Uh, the game that started. The uh, this specific season. Now we get round two. Bears at the Packers. What's your prediction, man? Part of me thinks Chicago can actually win this game because the Packers, they won, but they kept it close with the Redskins. So, you know, if I was a Packers fan, I'd be a little, I'd be very disappointed with that win, <laughs> especially since it was at home too and the Redskins were a really bad team. <coughs> but... You know, I got to say, Aaron Rodgers, he always plays well against the Bears. The Bears' defense has really taken a step back this year. They, it's still good, <coughs> but it's just nowhere near as good as last year. And I got to say, with the Bears being inconsistent this year and their offense being trash this year, I think Green Bay gets the sweeps. So I'm going ahead and taking the Packers 23-17. Okay. <laughs> Dude, you're good. Sorry, I just took a drink of water. Went down the wrong pipe. Excuse me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to go with the Packers here. Um, 
I mean, the Bears look like what the Bears could be last week against the Cowboys. And the Cowboys got to be some sort of shit to make Trubisky actually look like a first-round quarterback. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But the Packers, man, they're on a steamroll right now. They are, what, 9-3? and 10-3. Three? 10-3 three. Three or some shit? Ten yeah, three. so they're on their way to possibly winning the, or not possibly, pretty much winning the uh, NFC North, making a playoff spot and everything. So uh, I got the Packers here. Uh, I think this is close just because they're divisional rivals. This could be a defensive bout here. Um, let's say uh, 21 to 16, Packers. Okay. I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm going to go with the Packers. I mean, the Bears are playing better. Even Trubisky, you know, he's getting so some momentum. And he's playing better on the offense. But I don't think it's going to be enough to go up against uh, Green Bay, who's going to want to clinch the playoffs and more than likely their division. So I'm going to go Green Bay. I'm going to say 29 to 17. Okay. Uh, another NFC North team, man. We got the Vikings at the Chargers, who are not an NFC North team. But uh, what's your prediction, man? Yeah, this is kind of another no-brainer here. I got the Vikings. You know, the Chargers, they are one of the biggest disappointments this year. I mean, a lot of people would agree with that. I mean, Phillip Rivers has easily played the worst season of his career, and the Chargers' defense really is has really taken a step back from last year. I mean, I know they're coming off a blowout win against the Jags, but Jacksonville is a really bad team, and the Jaguars' defense is has uh, really looked sloppy this year as well. The Vikings are just a much better team, and Kirk Cousins is, ironically enough, the reason why Minnesota would be a playoff team today if they started, because you'd think it'd be the other way around. You'd think Kirk Cousins would be the reason Minnesota's not a playoff team, but he's actually the reason that they are a playoff team. But, yeah, Minnesota looks like they're playing really well on offense. Their defense isn't great. I mean, it's taken a few steps back from a couple years ago, but it's still but it's uh, still able to get the job done. So uh, yeah, I got Minnesota winning this one pretty easily, actually, thirty to seventeen. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Minnesota as well. I mean, the Chargers have looked decent the last few weeks, but I mean, they haven't really faced anyone of uh, of uh, of anyone of, uh, of of relevance, pretty much. So they're facing the Vikings, who are a stellar team right now possibly going to make the playoffs and everything. Uh, they are, of course, looking to make the playoffs. So, um, yeah, I got the Vikings here. They might be getting Adam Thielen back this week. Uh, that's kind of been in doubt the last few weeks, but they might finally get him back this one, uh, in this one. So uh, that should help him out here. So uh, let's go Vikings. Let's say... Um, 29 to... T- uh, 29 to 22. Okay, I'm going to go with the Vikings here. Chargers are awful. They really are. I don't know what the hell they're, they, they are this year. I really don't. But in the Vikings, they've surprised me uh, a lot this season. They're playing a lot better than I expected. I didn't, I, I, to be honest, I didn't think they were going to make the playoffs. Now they're looking to make the playoffs, and I think that's going to be the case for this game. I'm going to go with the Vikings. I'm going to say 31 to 14. Okay. Next game, Jaguars at the Raiders. This is a god-awful game. What's your prediction, man? Yeah, this is another one of those who-cares games. I got Oakland winning (laughs) simply because the Jaguars' defense is really bad and they're not playing good football, and I think Gardner Minshew may, may start in this game again. I mean, the Jaguars are just a total mess, let's face it. The Raiders, they're not going to go back. They're not going to the playoffs, no doubt about it, but I mean, I don't think that's going to stop them from at least trying. So, give me Oakland to win this one. Eh, let's say 27-23. Who cares about this game? <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, Raiders, I guess. I just don't know. Um, 26 to 14, I guess. Raiders. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Raiders. And just the thing, Jags were in the AFC championship game a few years back. Uh-huh. Wow. Well, Blake Bortles, wow. Yeah. And they spent 80, how much, $88 million? $88 million, on- $50 million guaranteed on Nick Foles, who's not even starting anymore. Yeah, you are just a complete mess. I mean, I, 
Yeah, Raiders. 20, 27 to 17. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, like still main said, I mean, the Jags are just a, a fucking mess. I, mean, I think that's an understatement at this point. I mean, I mean, the Browns are looking better. And speaking of the Browns, we got the Browns and the Cardinals. Uh, what is your prediction? Guess what, guys? I'm going upset again. I got the Arizona Cardinals mm. in this game. And here's why. Before the uh, before our game on Sunday, I was actually stuck watching that Bengals Browns game, and I noticed a lot of things out of the Browns that I did not that well I liked from them. But I'm talking about the Browns fan base in general. But Baker Mayfield <laughs> looked horrible in that game. He threw three interceptions against the Bengals, and the Bengals have what? one of the worst defenses in the league. Yeah, he threw three picks in that game. Where's so my yeah, phone? I gotta search that up. Field. What was that? No, I'm saying I gotta search that up. Go ahead, keep talking. So yeah, you know Baker Mayfield looked horrible in that game. You know, pretty much the Browns' run game bailed them out in that game, and Freddie Kitchens is still an absolute horrible playmate, a horrible uh, play caller as head coach. I, I'm, this Browns team is just not good. That's all there is to it, and. You know, I don't feel bad for the people that bought into the hype for them this season. They're still the same Cleveland Browns, all there is to it. Meanwhile, the Arizona Cardinals, stir their record indicates that, you know, that they're a horrible team. And I'm not taking anything away from the fact that they're, you know, 3-9-1 and one or whatever their record is. But they've been competitive in a lot of these games this year. They even kept it close with us and the Ravens. I, in fact, I think... They lost to both us and the Ravens by the same score, 23-17. So they kept it close with both those teams. The Cardinals, that being said, their defense is really bad. The Cardinals have statistically the worst defense in the league this season. So I think this is going to be a shootout and a battle of whose defense sucks more. But I got to tell you, I think the Cardinals are going to pull off the upset here. And I, and I think it's because Baker Mayfield – is still going to struggle. He's still going to turn the ball over. And the Cardinals are just going to be able to cash in on opportunities like that because Kyler Murray, I'm not saying that he's a franchise quarterback, but I, I'm saying that he can be a pretty solid starter for the Cardinals. But, yeah, I'm actually going with my second upset of the week. Give me Arizona 33-31. Okay. Uh yeah, I have to. I'm actually gonna go Cardinals as well, man. And I just saw the stats there. Mayfield threw zero inter- zero touchdowns. Excuse me, he threw zero fucking touchdowns against the Bengals. Devlin Hodges, his first yeah. throw coming in for Mason, a touchdown. Devlin fucking Hodges, he's a rook, undrafted rookie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he has yeah, guys like OBJ right. and like oh, no. wow. No, go ahead. No, I'm saying he he has like fucking weapons uh, a quarterback even dreams of, and he throws zero touchdowns. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Cardinals. I I just I I I I'm I'm my mind is blown at that. Like, really? Yeah, I can't trust the Browns. I will never trust the Browns until I see change, and I don't see that. I mean, they barely beat the Bengals. With their weapons. Right. It's like... So, I'm going to go Cardinals here. Uh, Cardinals get one back. Um, Browns fucking suck. So, let's go Cardinals. Uh, let's see. Both defenses are kind of... Well, the Cardinals defense is trash. The Browns... It's... Uh, it's... it's Everywhere. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's good, but it's bad. Cardinals. I'm going to go with the Cardinals. I'm going to say 20-13. Let's go 23 to 23 20 Cardinals. Okay. So, next game, we have the Rams at the Cowboys. This should be interesting. What's your prediction, man? Um, the uh, Los Angeles Rams, they've been playing really good since we beat them. Well, actually, I take that back. Since they got blown the fuck out by the Ravens on Monday Night Football a few weeks ago. So the Rams, you know, a lot of people were pegging them out, you know, oh, their season's over, you know, they're not going to be a good team next year or whatever. I mean, yeah, sometimes 
you know, to that I say sometimes you need a really bad loss to wake you up, and that's what the Rams had. You know, they got blown out at home by the Ravens by almost 40 points, and that that's all there is to it. Sometimes you need a good, solid ass-kicking as a wake-up call, and it was the fact that the Rams weren't doing their job and that the offense wasn't producing enough and the defense wasn't in sync, and they just got roundhouse kicked by a really good, by a really good Ravens team. And then ever since then, the Rams have really gotten their shit together on offense, and they've looked a lot better on offense. And I got that being the case again. I got them going into Dallas and beating the Cowboys here. Um, the Cowboys, they have lost three straight games. They are looking like a total mess right now. Their defense has really regressed over the past few weeks. And Jason Garrett is such a bad head coach. And for the life of me, I do not know why they have not fired him yet. But, hey. I hope to God they don't fire him because they ain't never going to win a thing (laughs) with Jason Garrett. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and take the Rams to win this one to keep themselves alive in the playoff line. I'm going to say they double up the Cowboys here, 32 to 16 L.A. God damn. But at the same time, I can I can see it because uh, what's the Rams record? Uh, I can't remember. Eight 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 and five. Oh, damn. And the Cowboys haven't beaten one team 500 or above mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, that's another I mean, they made... The Cowboys suck against winning teams this year. And also, Sean McVay has always had the Cowboys number since he became the Rams coach. Right, so... He's, he's had a number since he was a part of the Redskins staff. Yeah. So he knows the Cowboys very well. Right. So that's going to be a big uh, help for the Rams here. Absolutely. So, with that being said, I'm going to go with the Rams. Cowboys are trash. Um, they are not competitive whatsoever. They don't deserve to make the playoffs. I mean, I'm not saying the Eagles do either, but I mean, I mean, one of them's got to. Nonetheless, they're both going to lose. Uh, in the first round yeah. at that, if 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 either team makes the playoffs, but Rams win. Uh, let's go thirty-five to twenty-one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Rams. I'm gonna say thirty-three to seventeen. Rams. Okay. Next thing, we have the Falcons at the Niners. I think it's a no-brainer, but what's your prediction, man? Yeah, no doubt about it, no-brainer. Give me the 49ers here. Um, they put up 48 points against the Saints in New Orleans, one of the toughest places to play in the NFL. And the Falcons' defense has just been a mess all season. I mean, their offense is still kind of decent, but – 49ers have played really well on defense this year. I mean, people are saying, oh, the 49ers have taken a step back on defense. They allow 46 points in a win. No, the 49ers still have a solid defense. The Saints are just a really good offensive team. That's all there is to it. The Falcons, mm-hmm. they're, they're not on par with that team that went to the Super Bowl a few years ago. So, yeah, kind of a no-brainer again. Give me the 49ers. Again, I'm going to say they double up the Falcons 34-17. Yeah, this is just a no-brainer. Niners are very, very good. Team. They're a great team uh, this year, man. Just yeah. one of the top teams in the NFC. Potential favorite to go to the Super Bowl, man. I totally expect them to go to the ch- at least the, the NFC championship game. Who knows? Maybe we might get a rematch with the Niners and Saints at the championship game. I think that'd be exciting as fuck. Um, yeah, Niners win I- this. Uh, this is – wait, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I think San Francisco clinches a playoff spot with a win, so that's just another point. Oh, yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, yeah N- Niners win uh, 43 to nothing, and I'm being serious. Wow. Damn, holy. <laughs> well, the Falcons lost uh, Calvin Ridley for the year. I know they got Julio Jones, but Richard Sherman's going to try to blanket him all day. Uh, is Austin Hooper back? I don't even think so. No. The rushing game's no. uh, inexistent, so, I mean, I don't know who the fuck else they got. Russell Gage, that dude that caught the 93-yard touchdown last week. That, it's going to be it's no match against the Niners defense. Right. You know, obviously I got the 49ers here. I'm going to say 41 to 18. Okay. Sunday Night Football, man. We have the Buffalo Bills at the Pittsburgh Steelers. What shall be your prediction, man? All right. So I'm going to try to keep this at a minimum because I have a lot to say, but I'm going to try to keep it at a minimum. Josh Allen is a running quarterback, and the Steelers 
historically have a problem with running quarterbacks. So that's the first advantage that the Bills have over us. And the second advantage is that the Bills, you know, Buffalo's defense is better than our offense. I don't candy coat anything. I'm just telling it how it is. But I like how our offense has improved over the past few weeks. I mean, still our offense is really is still pretty bad, but it has improved. I mean, I said this in my victory lap back on Sunday. James Washington and Deontay Johnson, they are – we could potentially have two number two wide receivers, and that's a really good problem to have. You know, they've really stepped up to the range. They've really been good contributors for us over the past few weeks. But I think the couple things that we have advantages over the Bills is that, first of all, the Bills, they have a really strong defense. It's kind of it's really young and physical, and it can rack up big play tackles a more opportunistic defense than the Bills have. You know, when we need to get a turnover, we get it. When we need a bit when we need a sack on second or third down, we get it. When we need to come mm-hmm. up with a big stop on defense towards the final phases of a game, we get it. The Bills don't really have a defense like that. They're just a physical defense. Our defense is clutch in very important moments of the game and it's like i said very opportunistic so that's the first advantage i think we have over the bills second advantage is that this is the first sunday night i actually looked this up this is the first sunday night football game the bills will be on in 12 years they haven't been on sunday night football since 2007 so this will really be the first time that we see the Bills under pressure and in the spotlight in an important game. And with this young team that they have, I don't think they're ready for it because they lost a tough game to Baltimore. They got blown out by the Eagles of all teams earlier in the season. And, you know, they spoiled a, they spoiled a chance to put the Patriots away. They really did. So I don't, you know, I'm not taking anything away from the Bills. They're 9-4. and four. They're a really good team. But I just don't think they're ready for, you know, to be under pressure like that. Meanwhile, Lord only knows how many times the Stowers have been on Sunday Night Football. And Lord only knows how many times Mike Tomlin has come up with a good game plan in primetime games. Because that's... One thing I always give Mike Tomlin credit for is that he is that more often than not he has a good he has a good game plan for prime time. We always play well under the lights. So plus it's our last home game of the year. We're gonna want to go out with a bang like we always like we usually do. And I think that's where we get the advantage. I like our defense better than Buffalo's offense in this game. I mean, I definitely think the Bills will keep it close. But I'm going to go ahead and take us to get this win because I think we're due for a big win. And the winner of this game is essentially the number one wild card in the AFC. This is definitely the game of the week. I could see the Bills winning. But I'm going to go ahead and take our boys to get the W 23 to 21. Okay. Damn, man. Um, Call me a homer or whatever you want. I'm going with the Steelers, man. I feel like just with this defense, we can beat anybody. Now, I like the Bills' offense. They don't really – they have no one of specific or relevant name value. They have no star power whatsoever. But they can get the job done. But like you said, man, this defense is just very op- uh, opportunistic. They just make plays. They are so clutch. They always save the day. They always come through when the offense doesn't, man. With this defense, it's it's – I think we can beat anybody. It, it it's just that's how much confidence I have in this defense now, man. They just they keep playing at an elite level. They're so consistent. They never let loose of any fucking thing, man. This defense is crazy. This offense definitely needs to pick it up. Thankfully, we will be, or more, hopefully, more than likely, we'll be getting uh, Juju and Connor back. So that takes some pressure off of guys like Johnson and and Washington to step up and everything. Um, as well for guys like Snell and White and, 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 and Samuels and shit. So, I like our odds. I'm not going to underestimate the Bills whatsoever in this one. They're a very solid team uh, trying to make the playoffs like us and everything. But uh, with everything at stake, with us uh, in the playoff picture, uh, last uh, home game, like you said, in prime time and everything, and our resume in prime time, 
I'm confident. So I'm going to go to the Steelers here, man. Um, I, I agree. I think this is close. I think it's low scoring. I think this is a uh, heavily defensive bout. So uh, I'm going to say Steelers win 18 to – actually, no, 19 to 16. Steelers. Okay. I'm going to go with the Steelers here. This will not be an easy task. This will not be an easy game. I am not underestimating the Bills. They have a great defense, a very solid offense. They are 9-4 for a reason. But I feel like with the Steelers right now, we have more, like, momentum. In a way, star power, especially on the defense. Oh, yeah. And I feel like we're going to want it more. You know, because the Steelers are playing their ass off. They're ta- they're pretty much taking no for an answer. Another note to make, I don't mean to interrupt you, but... It's December football. Tomlin has always showed up in December football. Steelers exactly. have always showed up in December That's football. Right. Again, prime time. Home game. Last home game of the year. We're going to come through, man. Or I'm hoping we'll come through. We're definitely going to want to show up big time. Exactly, and I have to agree with you. The Steelers are going to want it more, and I feel like Steelers will use this momentum and, 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 and uh, uh, what's the word? I'm having a huge brain for it. But I think you guys get what I mean, you know. Nonetheless, I got the Steelers going here. Um, I got Steelers winning here. I'm going to say 24-21. I say Boswell becomes clutch like he's been all year. Okay. Don't jinx it. I, 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 don't, I, he's I been great I, all year, so don't I, fucking jinx it. Yeah, I hope I just didn't, but <laughs> yeah, Steelers. All right, man. Uh, and to close out week 15, guys, Monday Night Football, we have the Indianapolis Colts at the Dome, the New Orleans Saints. So what's your, uh, what's your prediction, man? Colts are getting blown the hell out. All you need to know. They, they have just... <laughs> I mean, I know it's it's so blunt and short, but I'm being honest with you. The Colts have looked really bad since they lost to us. And this team, I don't think that they've just lost their identity, and I don't think they have anything else to play for. They're going into New Orleans to play the Saints. They're coming off a loss in which they scored 46 points on offense. The Saints are, like I said earlier, the Saints are just a really good offensive team, and their defense is still strong. You know, even though they gave up 48 points in a, in a loss, I still think the Saints have a good defense. I just think that's one thing that no one really talks about with the Saints is their defense. They got a, they got a good defense. So, yeah, Saints take advantage of this one. And I say, oh, and I just remembered this, too. The last time the Colts were in New Orleans, they lost 62-7. to That was back in 2011. I don't think oh, it's going to be that bad, but still, I think the Saints just beat them up again. New Orleans, 45-13. to 13. Okay. I'm agree. This is the Saints. Uh, all right, this is no burner. I'm going with the Saints here, man. Um, I mean, Drew Brees is coming off a six-touchdown performance, and seeing what Jameis Winston did against the Colts last week, Drew Brees is going to definitely uh, one-up that. Um, Saints win. Let's go 45-17. to 17. Yeah, obviously I'm going with the Saints here. Um, I mean, the Colts weren't looking too bad earlier on, but it's just like Still Maiden said, once we beat them, they just went on a complete downward spiral like they never recovered. And, again, and going up against the Saints, who ho- suffered a heartbreaking loss to the Niners, you're definitely going to want to release their frustration on someone, and unfortunately that will be the Colts. I'm going to say the Saints win. 46 to 13. Okay, man. Anyway, guys, that is week 15 predictions with Steel Main. Again, massive shout out, massive thank you to Steel Main for his time and everything, man, for his predictions and his thoughts. So, uh, massive shout out to you, man. Thanks for joining us uh, for the predictions, man. I'm going to give you the floor right now, man. Tell uh, uh, You can tell the audience where they can find you, uh, what platforms you're on, and everything. So, uh, you have the floor, man. Well, thanks a lot for having me again, boys. I really appreciate it. Always enjoy being on here. But, uh, yeah, you know, if you guys sub up to the channel, I'm going to post my links to my personal Twitter, my YouTube Twitter, Still Maiden, and my YouTube channel in the uh, comments section when this video comes out. I just decided to give Twitter another chance for once, and so far, so good with it. So, yeah, if you guys want to hit me up on both my Twitters, sub up to the channel. I'll have those, uh, I'll have those commented on the, uh, on the twins video, but, uh, yeah, not, not all there is to it, but 
as always, I appreciate you boys having me on here. Always enjoy being on here. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks for joining us. That comment will be pinned at the top of the comment section so you guys can uh, go check any of that out. Highly suggest you do, man. If you enjoy our content, you'll more so like his content, man. Uh, so, uh, again, mass shout out to him. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, see you guys next one, man. Like, up, subscribe. We'll see you later. Peace. Peace. Later.